Hello everyone, welcome to the daily editorial analysis put by Shankar Ayas Academy today 25th November 2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we will be discussing. The first article 1 and a half steps forward. This article is talking about the how the religious as well as the caste identities are influencing the electoral outcome in India. And this article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. And the next article India's urban infrastructure financing needs and reality. This article is talking about the structural issues in urban development financing and in this topic we will be discussing that issues and then we will be discussing certain initiatives taken by the government of India to address the challenges faced by the urban population and this article is taken from the newspaper The Hindu and before moving to the discussion we have an important announcement from Shankar IS Academy we know that every year prelims are getting tougher therefore solving as much as questions possible is the only way, only way to crack the prelims examination so as a part of that pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025 has been launched by Shankar IS Academy and the batch 3 has started on 21st November 2024 but the registration is still open link for the registration will be given in the description do register and take the test clear the prelims so without much delay let's get into our newspaper discussion India's urban infrastructure financing needs and reality we know that as a nation we made significant progress in various sectors ranging from the social sector to the space sector and we also have a plan to establish a, establish an exclusive space station for India in the mid of the next decade. So we have made that much progress and achievements. Therefore, we have also certain challenges that yet to be resolved. And today we are going to discuss one such challenge associated with our progress that is the rapid urbanization. Was urbanization actually a challenge for us? Actually not because we know that India, the subcontinent is known for urban culture that is hairpin culture. We can be proud that our ancestors were pioneers in the field of urban planning management mitigation measures and also in effective sanitation but today the problem is rapid urbanization due to various push factors and as well as pull factors for example the agricultural backwardness in the rural area the unemployment in the rural area lack of infrastructure development in the rural area can act as a push factor which is leading to a mass rural to urban migration trend that is what currently india is witnessing and if you read the article we can see that Currently, there are, there are 400 million people are living in Indian cities and this is expected to be 800 million in the next two, three decades. So, that makes the rapid urbanization a biggest concern for Indian government as well as policy makers. But this article is talking about the structural issues in financing the urban needs. If you take the World Bank report, we can see that by 2036, India needs at least 70 lakh crore to meet the urban infrastructure development needs but currently the allocation of a per year currently but the allocation per year is just 1.3 lakh rupees this is not enough but at the same time the local bodies urban local bodies also facing a lot of issues related to the revenue collection and the utilization of revenue what are those we will be discussing that so without much delay let's get into our newspaper discussion so like i said the opportunities and challenges in the India's urbanization. So, before that, we have to understand what is meant by urbanization. I used those words at least five times before getting into the discussion, right? Urbanization can be simply defined as the rapid growth of population in the urban areas due to various pull factors and push factors. So, just now I mentioned what are those pull factors and push factors. And uh, let us see what are the opportunities and challenges in it. The Like I said, the article says 400 million people are living uh, currently in India in the urban areas and uh, which is expected to be double that is around 800 million in the next 30 years. Therefore, it will put significant pressure on the urban infrastructure, urban land, resource of the government as well as it can also lead to many socio-economic implications such as poverty, unemployment, rise of slums, discrimination as well as rise of crimes. And coming to the requirement of uh, for the urban infrastructure like the World Bank report says at least 70 lakh crore by 2030 but now the annual allocation is just 1.3 lakh crore which is not at all enough so what are those challenges associated with the urban development first major challenge is the insufficient municipal financing or insufficient collection of fund for example the municipal revenue is contributing only to the one percentage of the total gdp and it is currently in stagnation and this stagnation you have to note that it is still persisting despite there is an increase in the center to state transfer from 37 percentage to 44 percentage allocation and another shocking news is that there is a decline in municipalities own revenue from 51 percentage to 
43 percentage and according to the certain data of 2017-18 it is saying that the the major corporations in india including the jaipur and the bangalore are only utilizing the 5 to 20 percentage of their total revenue or tax potential which shows the inefficiency in utilizing as well as in collecting the tax coming to the second major problem is the insufficient resource utilization or under utilization of the resource according to the 15th finance commission the municipal revenues of nearly 23 percentage are still remaining unspent for development projects and certain cities or certain corporations like hyderabad and chennai they are spending only 50 percentage of their capital expenditure budget between 2018 and 90. the next major challenge is the low cost and recovery so we can see that the municipal corporations revenue itself declined in the past five years so like that the pop the contribution of the property tax itself declined or contributing only 0.15 percentage of the total gdp but the recovery cost for urban services comes around 20 to 50 percentage of the gdp and the article also points out certain issues related to the public private partnership so comparing with the 2012 2018 data we can see that there is a significant drop in the public private investments that is from 8353 crore in the 2012 year to 467 crore in the year 2018 so we know that the public private partnerships is very important for mega projects in india but still is declining in the last few years since 2000 18. and the next major issue is the limited integration with the urban development that is the government should know or they should have a plan to utilize or capture the capital value of something for example if you imagine that uh, government introduced or constructed a railway line or a metro line or a road through a particular area then they should know how to utilize the spaces surrounding this project for example you can integrate the metro rails with the it parks or hospitals or other mega projects to increase the value of that region so definitely this will lead to a lot of other positive impact such as environment gen such as employment generation and income generation and the next major challenge is the climate vulnerabilities this is very important while uh, while going with the development of the urban areas the projects that we are implementing should be sustainable resilient to the adverse climate conditions and it should ensure both economic growth and inclusive development now we are going to see certain initiatives taken by the government to address the challenges in the urban area of India. The first major initiative is the AMRD, that is Adal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation. This program is exclusively focusing on improving the sanitation and basic services in urban area, which is covering almost 500 cities across India, which is mainly focusing on improving the water supply, that is safe and suitable uh, water supply for every household. Uh, sewage management and urban transport and as per the recent report nearly 80 percentage of the fund allocated for the amrit project is utilized properly but still there are issues related to the you know the delayed implementation of the projects as well as there are questions related to the sustainability of the projects launched under the amrit and then we have the smart cities mission so it is developing around it is aimed to develop around 100 smart cities across india which is primarily focusing on digital infrastructure, e-governance and investment attractive policies. And it is focusing on area-based development, pan-city initiatives and nearly 70% of the fund is utilized properly. But still, like in the case of Amr, the smart city issue, the smart city mission is also facing certain problems delayed, related to the delayed implementation of the projects as well as the and a proper execution but still we can see the smart city mission played an important role in ensuring the digital services in india then we have the pradhan mandri avas yojana urban this is focusing on housing in mega cities so the major goal of the scheme is to provide affordable housing for all urban poor by 2022 but still the mission is yet to be completed and under this project nearly 1.23 crore houses were sanctioned but still there are concerns related to the affordability because it is providing subsidy to the uh, to the beneficiaries but still there are questions related to whether the subsidized uh, uh, price or the fund is sufficient uh, to complete this project so there are questions related to the uh, affordability of this project at the same time timely completion of the houses 
So we have to understand that the the housing programs are launched not only by the central government across in various states. But the thing is, if you cannot complete the housing projects on time, then it will it will convert the landless people into houseless people. That will be the only difference. It will not make a progressive change in the society. So this question is there in the case of Pradhan Mandri Avas Yojana too. Then we have the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban. So. We already did an exclusive editorial uh, session for Swachh Bharat Mission. You can check it on our channel. And this, we know that famous Swachh Bharat Mission, it is focusing on freeing India from open defecation and also solid waste management and sanitation. So this is the main goal of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. And this is focusing on, you know, the, the, the behavioral, bringing a behavioral change in the society. For example, the certain communities or certain people who are living in the backward or the in the remote areas of the uh, in the country are still lacking uh, access to toilets so this is this is happening for generations so once you introduce the toilet you have to bring a behavioral change in such communities to utilize the constructed toilets to ensure that the project is completed and uh, as a part of this project nearly 10 million 10 million public toilets are con constructed across the countries but still there are issues related to the uh, segregation and the recycling of the waste at the same time you know it, it is yet to be completed because of the limited participation of the public and then we have the national urban livelihood mission this is focusing on creating employment opportunities for the uh, unemployed people and poor people in the urban area through providing uh, training as well as uh, through providing credit facility uh, after formation of the self-help groups the biggest benefit of the self-help groups are the the people will taking a collective uh, loan for a huge amount and they will be sharing among themselves therefore there is uh, mostly uh, in this case there will be no need for any collateral at the same time that uh, the loan burden or the debt burden on individuals will be reduced therefore in the recent times the self-help group has played a significant progress in addressing the credit facility in remote as well as in the uh, in the backward regions of our country but there are still concerns related to the skill mismatch between the market and a person has for example a person received uh, uh, for example a person received a skill training in the field of mechanical engineering or something related to vehicle but the market is not currently needing such people so there will be a mismatch between the market demand and a skill a person have this will ultimately leads to unemployment only therefore this project has to address the changing uh, you know demand of the market then only it will become successful and then we have the metro rail projects it is very important for metro cities in addressing you know rapid movement of the people at the same time uh, increasing the urban mobility and this also has many environmental benefits such as it will reduce the congestion in the road and it will also reduce the air pollution which is currently happening in our capital delhi and the mega cities projects on metro rails are also focusing on integration of the metro network with the with the various other sectors under the national urban transport policy but still like i said it has a lot of other challenges such as high cost for example if you compare the local train in the metro city with the metro rail the metro rail will be slightly higher for example in the case of uh, chennai the 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 minimum metro ticket is available only at rupees 30 so this will deter the local people this will deter the common people from taking the metro rail for urban travel and then there is a lack of feeder service integration this will also reduce the effectiveness of the metro rail projects in urban areas then we have the urban mission the goal of this mission is to build uh, urban like facilities in the rural areas so we know that the lack of infrastructure development or lack of access to uh, basic infrastructure such as advanced or multi-speciality hospitals and better transport systems are one of the major factors that are pushing the people from rural area to urban area but once you can bring all these facilities this basic facilities uh, to the rural areas definitely we can reduce the rural to urban urban migration trend at the same time this will ultimately reduce the pressure on uh, urban resources and infrastructure and therefore this urban mission is focusing on social economic and physical infrastructure development in the rural area but at the same time it also has concerns related to the, its its goal for example still the rural to urban migration is happening on a mass scale and then we have the urban infrastructure development scheme for small and medium towns this is also a similar scheme like urban mission this is focusing on infrastructure development of the small towns to reduce the migration to the urban area 
so which is focusing on the infrastructure development in the smaller towns but still there are concerns related to its limited coverage and uh, the slow implementation of the projects under the uh, urban infrastructure development scheme for small and medium towns scheme so what can be done we discussed what are the challenges facing in the urban area especially related to the structural issues of financing the urban developments and then we discussed the certain schemes initiated by the government for the for addressing the problems or the challenges in the urban area so what can be done what can the recommend what are the recommendations that we can give while writing our main answer the first is addressing financial shortfalls and inefficiencies in the municipal governance what can be done for example like the article says if you can give a, an autonomous power to the state finance commission then the state finance commission can train the local bodies to how to collect uh, taxes so and how to utilize the taxes properly so this kind of issues can be addressed once we can address the financial shortfalls and inefficiencies in the municipal governance and then we have uh, another that is achieving the 70 lakh crore investment target through public private collaboration so in the, if you take the 12th plan the 12th plan uh, five year plan right the 12th five year plan uh, working group they already had a, they already laid a framework a financial framework to bring an investment of 70 lakh crore for infrastructure development for the next uh, 20 years so we can take such initi initiatives and uh, we can develop uh, or we can strengthen the public private collaboration which has significantly fallen in the recent days then we can we have to give focus on key areas such as innovation governance efficiency and sustainable urban planning which is very important to ensure the inclusive growth of every community in the indian society and like i said the goal we can achieve is the inclusive growth for rapidly urbanizing population because if 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 you are not adopting such an inclusive growth path then it will further bring inequalities within the society within both rural as well as urban society so with this we will try to discuss a main question the question is evaluate india's urban future faces significant financial and structural challenges and suggest measures to overcome them to ensure a sustainable and inclusive urban development so in the first part we have to address that uh, what are the uh, structural and financial issues that we are facing related to the urban development and then we have to in the second part we can write about the measures taken by the government or measures you, uh, you can give recommendations how to achieve a sustainable and inclusive urban development try to answer the uh, question and post it in the comment section we will review and replay for your answer and now it's time to discuss the second article so we know that india is often referred as salad bowl because of the diverse nation because of its diversity diversity means all type of diversity we are representing cultural diversity because we have thousands of languages we have hundreds of different uh, dressing style we have you know hundreds of cuisines we have different custom and within the same state you can see different cultures and we are representing different type of populations and if you coming to the environmental perspective you can see india has both uh, himalaya and uh, the great desert of thar india has the deccan plateau and the plains of ganga so in this way india is a salad bowl no doubt in that but this news article is talking about the recently held elections in the states of maharashtra and jharkhand and uh, we know that yesterday the election results came and the uh, uh, the results of the two states were entirely different right so this is showing how the aspirations and the interest of people within a same state within a same nation are differing each other so let us discuss the most prominent factors social factors that is influencing the indian election and the politics that is religion and caste and how it is shaping the indian election and uh, what are the provisions that we have in india to ensure a free and fair election and what are the recommendations that can be given by us while writing the main sense so without much delay let's get into our editorial discussion first we are going to see the role of caste and religion in elections first one is the influencing the order behavior through making caste based appeals you can influence the the certain communities living in certain constituencies or certain communities living in the same constituencies for example we know that the caste like the nationalism will also create a feeling of oneness and it has a capacity the appeals based on the caste has a capacity to sideline the developmental agendas therefore using the caste and the religion will create a kind of emotions and sentiments among the people and it will be helpful in getting votes and this is simply can be defined as vote to bank politics and then we have the candidate selections for example if certain political parties are finding that the certain communities 
has hold or dominance in certain constituencies then definitely the such political parties will give uh, tickets to people from such communities to ensure victory in that constituency and then some of the regional impacts for example the uttar pradesh and bihar witnessed the growth of caste politics especially in the form of rashtriya janata dal in the bihar and the bahujan samaj party in uttar pradesh and this uh, rise of this caste based political parties played a significant role especially in the 90s indian politics and at the same time we cannot say that it is entirely a negative impact because this caste based politics also has certain positive impact such as it played an important role in addressing the needs and aspirations of the marginalized communities it also played a, an important role through acting as a platform to address the needs and the aspirations sorry aspirations of the dalit politics so Uh, the, these are the positive sides therefore the caste based politics has both positive and negative sides and in in south we have tamil nadu in tamil nadu the uh, the political parties based on dravidian ideas are the best example for uh, such influence of religion and caste for example uh, the the dravidian politics or the dravidian parties in tamil nadu emerged as a result of anti brahmin certain movements sorry anti brahmin movements which emerged in the late 19th and early 20th century so now we are going to see the positive impacts of the uh, the religion and the caste in the election first one like i said the political representations for example the uh, the just now i said the the rise of bahujan party in uttar pradesh and rashtriya janata dal in bihar played an important role in addressing the needs and aspirations of the dalit communities and obcs and the best example we have that is the the janata government right the janata government they came to power in the year 1977 so the net results were Uh, you know the mm, brought is came to power in the year 1977 and once they came to power they introduced a lot of measures to include the obcs and the dalit communities the best example is the mandal commission and ensuring social justice for example once the political parties are formed uh, based on caste ideologies or uh, minority ideologies then definitely they can pressure the government to introduce welfare programs that protects the interest and the developments of such marginalized communities and this can also push for better reservation policies for example the tamil nadu politics or the especially the political parties in tamil nadu are pushing for reservations uh, of obcs bcs and the scst communities in government institutions and uh, government education institutions but at the same time it also has certain negative impacts such as the fragmentation the identity politics that is the caste based identity politics or the religion based identity politics can sideline the developmental agenda of a state for example uh, through influencing the voters through sentimental approach or through emotional approach based on caste and religion the political parties can hide their developmental agendas or their you know their failures in bringing development and the next is the perpetuation of the inequalities for example uh, the caste based or identity based politics can hinder the meritocracy and the social cohesion which is base for ensuring social harmony and protecting the democratic values this can be violated so let's see some of the examples related to that the caste based alliance like i said in the mandal commission which is uh, which played an important role in ensuring the reservation for obc right but if you see we can see both uh, mandal pro mandal uh, protest uh, if you look into the mandal commission history we can see an anti uh, mandal commission wave across india when the commission recommended obc for reservation for obc but at the same time we can also see pro uh, pro mandal commission stands in india at the time so therefore this shows the uh, dif- the conflict of uh, interest between different communities living within india and how the factors such as the caste and religion can be manipulated for political gain and then we have the religious polarization the best example india has the Uh, the babri masjid incident of 1996 and the catastrophic um, incident of uh, gujarat riot in 2002 so this were the net result of the religious polarization due due to for political gains moving on to the role of religion in the elections we can see the same as the caste it can be exploited for it can be exploited for vote bank politics it uh, it uh, for uh, endorsements for example certain political parties will influence the religious leaders for example recently in certain political parties in kerala try to influence the the church especially through the uh, clergy community for getting more votes so this can th- this is how the religion can be used for manipulating the election purposes or election ethics then we have the policy alignments for example if a government is forming based on 
you know a majority of vote from particular communities then definitely the government have uh, you know a policy shift uh, for the benefits of such communities who are voting for such political parties to keep them in power like the uh, like the caste politics it also has both, uh, both the negative and positive sides uh, the positive sides including the representation that is providing manu uh, voice for the minorities through welfare programs and the cohesion that is the the religion plays an important role in encouraging secularism and uh, interfaith understanding among the different communities in india and at the same time negative impacts such as the communal tensions for example the use of religion in the elections can lead to polarization and violence the best example we discussed just now that is the gujarat riot of 2002 and before that we had a babri masjid incident and uh, uh, the vote bank politics which is undermining the uh, secular uh, ethics of indian democratic values now we are going to see certain provisions in india that ensures the fair elections first we will start with the constitutional provisions first one is article 15 which is prohibits the which is prohibiting the discrimination on own ground based on caste religion or uh, sex or place of birth then we have article uh, 25 which is guaranteeing religious freedom for all the communities in india to practice profess and propagate their religion peacefully which is also subjected but so this is but this is also subjected to public order and health and then we have article 27 which is prohibiting the state's fund or the public fund for promotion and maintenance of particular religions and the important act related to the election that is the representation of people act in 1951 the section 123 clause 3 of the act declares that the use of caste or religious appeals during election campaign will be considered as a corrupt practice at the same time this act is also taking significant steps against hate speech for example it is penalizing uh, use of the religious or the caste identities during campaigns and then we have the constitutional body that is the election commission of india so election commission of india which is under the article 324 of the indian constitution which is responsible for ensuring free and fair election in the indian state and uh, the election commission will introduce has something called the model code of conduct as per this model code of conduct the uh, the political parties will come under uh, strict regulation and uh, uh, rules while going for elections for example uh, as per this model code of conduct there is a time limit for election campaign there is a way for election campaign and the political parties has to has to open up the the public fund they accumulated for the election prac, for election campaigns and uh, you, you can also see that uh, before 48 hours of the election all election campaign and its related activities has to be stopped and if the election commission found that any pa political party member or any political party is violating this model code of conduct then it can even lead to the suspension of such political parties from contesting elections in that time and also we have certain judicial interventions the first major case is the sr bombay case 1994 which is very famous and in this court the supreme sorry in this case the supreme court upheld that the secularism is a basic structure of the constitution it should not be touched and the second significant case is the abiram singh case 2007 the here the supreme court banned all type of electoral appeals based on caste and religion so not this cases it will be very useful while writing the main answer and you have to note that in 2024 the general election was held therefore we can expect questions related to the fair elections so please note these cases these are very important so what are the suggestions that we can give while writing an answer for a question based on this concept first is generating awareness through education for example providing civic education to children from uh, from the early stage and this will reduce and and this civic education will reduce caste and religious biases uh, among the voters because this will help um, the civic education will help them to understand the democratic values and the values of the indian state and then we have the strict enforcement of laws which is very essential to uh, you know monitor and penalize the the voters as well as the political parties who are violating uh, the model code of conduct then we have inclusive development that is focusing on inclusive development which is very important for you know the the social as well as the cultural development of every communities in india therefore once they reach a development then definitely there will there will be a reduction of such communities on relaying uh, caste or religious based identity politics so the political parties will not be able to influence them using such identities then and this judicial strong oversight will helpful 
in uh, you know in preventing the misuse of religious or caste based identity in getting uh, votes for election so these are the suggestions that we can give while writing the main sentence not this and uh, so in this topic we discussed the role of caste and religion in indian election and uh, what are its positive and negative impacts and then we discussed certain constitution provisions in india we have to ensure free and fair election and then we saw certain suggestions that we can be used while writing the main answer so try to answer this mains practice question the question is caste and religion play a pivotal role in shaping india's electoral outcomes often leading to social fragmentation and undermining the democratic fabric and Anal critically analyze so this question is entirely asking about the challenges posed by the religion and caste identities in ensuring free and fair election with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's editorial analysis if you like the video hit the like button give your feedback as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and uh, before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive on time update from shangarayas academy thank you have a nice day